Before YouTube, I started out streaming Scrabble on Twitch with a major focus on providing coverage and commentary for live Scrabble competitions. I haven't done that as much these days, but last week I had the privilege of producing and commentating the live stream for an elite invitational Scrabble event in Lagos, Nigeria, the MGI Grand Slam. The Grand Slam is the culmination of MGI's year-long season of events in Nigeria, with only the top yearly performers eligible to compete for the title of champion. For that reason, the level of Scrabble at the Grand Slam is extremely high. The event consists of a 24-round main event, followed by a best-of-five finals between the top two main event finishers. This year, the championship title came down to the very end of the very last game. And in this video, I'm going to recap the best plays and most dramatic moments of the epic five-game match between finalists Nasikak Etim and Timilehin Doko. Etim has been one of the top players in Nigeria for over two decades, including a win at the African Scrabble Championship in 2014, and he holds the number 11 ranking in the world. Meanwhile, the 22-year-old Doko is one of the fastest rising players not just in Nigeria, but in the entire world, having already broken into the top 50 players worldwide before even graduating university. When the dust settled after the main event, at team was the top finisher with a 17 and 7 record, with Doko just behind at 16 and a half wins by virtue of a tie he recorded in round 3. With barely an hour to recover, the two finalists began their best of 5 match straight away. In game 1, at team opens with his best move of Wata, and 2 turns later, he's faced with this position. He makes the very perceptive move of dot for 19 points. He's leaving three vowels and only one consonant for next turn, and he could achieve better vowel consonant balance by playing do instead. However, a team sees that this option would create an easy place for Doko to score if he has an e to hook ew with two e's to form ew with three e's. Because Doko's previous move was a three-tile exchange, the odds are better than usual that he's holding that valuable E. In fact, he is and would have played parallel to Do for upwards of 30 points. Instead, on this closed board, he's forced to open for just 13 points, and a team's astute choice pays immediate dividends. Doko still leads midway through the game, but a team draws the first blank and finds his highest scoring bingo of arouses for 73. This move does create a dangerous C hook for carouses, though. Doko answers with the excellent move of held for 41, hooking adored, and a team draws the valuable C immediately, except he doesn't have any vowels to go with it, and he's forced to play grice for 22. Doko draws the X, but lacks a great place to play it, and he cleverly plays Jiri, setting up an excellent potential scoring spot for the X with a variety of draws. Unfortunately for him, a team has just the right letters to pounce on the spot, increasing his lead further. Doko never gets down a bingo with the second blank as a team continues to block and cruises to a 374 to 302 win. In game two, Doko draws a blank to open, but he has no playable bingos and plays Matt instead. Two turns later, after a team's lovely overlap of Neurite, Doko draws the second blank as well and makes an absolutely dazzling play, finding his top scoring move by far of Angered for 99 points, the only choice that forms overlaps with all seven of his tiles. Beautiful play. Undaunted, a team answers back quickly with two 50-point plays in Def and Do hooking Dangered. Doko battles valiantly with excellent plays like Begaze, Obi It, and Rawaru, but a team gets the next bingo down with Rincers, while Doko is forced to exchange an unplayable cue. A team goes on to win easily from there, 520 to 343. On the brink of elimination in Game 3, Doko turns in an inspired performance. 
first, he finds another gorgeous overlap of odding for 46 in the early going, by far his best move. Two turns later, a team attempts the bingo of flip over, but Doko challenges it off the board, likely realizing that he's confused it with the valid flop over. It's a huge turning point, as Doko then plays the impressive Wangis in the same spot. After several lower scoring moves, Doko plays both blanks in a 1-2 punch of Kinrids for 82, followed by the gorgeous Quies for a whopping 108, and a team's response of Airboat for 73 and a perfect endgame sequence are nowhere near enough, as Doko keeps his chances alive with a 491 to 330 win in Game 3. In Game 4, Doko and a team are neck and neck after three moves, but Doko showcases an excellent combination of word knowledge and defense with his first bingo of Ropeable for 67. He could play the more common anagram Operable in the same spot for two more points, but that would create a dangerous scoring spot for a team to use next turn with the vowel atop the double letter score. Ropeable easily earns back the two-point sacrifice on defense, making it impossible to overlap without an E and placing a consonant in that critical spot. In fact, a team is overrun by consonants, and after he's forced to play Mutt, he draws four more of them, while Doko bingos immediately for a second time with Congos for 78 to widen his lead. After a team makes a desperation opening of Clad, Doko showcases excellent initiative with his play of Def, closing the dangerous lane and keeping the letters O and P for next turn, where he plans to play Lop for a strong score. In fact, he draws another E and does even better with Lope for 38, and soon after, he lands the knockout blow of Swiftlet for 102, his top scoring bingo. After another flawless endgame by both players, Doko has evened the match with a giant 579 to 342 win in game 4, and it feels like the momentum of the match has completely shifted. In the decisive game 5, Doko opens with Dia holding his S, hoping to pluralize with a bingo, while a team makes a beautiful overlap in response of them for 38 points. Doko draws all vowels and is forced to exchange, while a team draws the first blank. But with no playable bingos, he takes a solid score of 25 points with Pew. Doko is in the exact same situation, holding the second blank without any bingos of his own, and just as a team did, he uses his W and scores solidly with we. A team pounces with his only playable bingo of tuition for 82, while Doko cuts into the lead with his response of suitors, but the momentum is no longer firmly on his side. A team plucks two S's from the bag, and with a useful S hook available on the board, he can afford to use one to score with music for 27. Doko answers with by far his best option of Janny for 34, which a team challenges unsuccessfully, boosting the score by another 5 points. A team draws two eyes to join the one he kept from last turn, and he has no reasonable option to shed more than one, so he plays Bin for 23. Meanwhile, Doko's own rack is spoiled by the Q. Here, he plays Cat for 32, leaving four consonants and one vowel, but the tricky Burka for 36 might have been a slight improvement for him here. After trading small scoring plays, a team seizes the lead back with Oriest for 85, while Doko is struggling with a mess of consonants. He manages to score well with Bikes for 31, but things are looking grim. On his next move, he opens the board with Gata out of desperation, and a team has the opportunity to land the finishing blow of Afghanis, the currency of Afghanistan, for 84. Fortunately for Doko, he doesn't spot it, perhaps fixating on his S setup as he plays the very solid 46-point Fash instead. Holding multiple duplicated tiles and the X, Doko plays Lax for 21. He's hoping to draw an O for the Oxo hook where a miracle bingo might actually score enough to make the game close. 
Although Etim has an O to use in that spot already, he doesn't have any great plays to make there, and instead elects to play Pina to block all the lanes on the upper portion of the board, saving his O for later. Shockingly, while Doko has no useful plays through the G, O, or T of Gata, the P of Etim's move gives him the amazing bingo of Preluder for 83, which a team challenges to make absolutely sure of its validity. The play is indeed good, giving Doko five extra points. At last, the tournament has come down to this position. A team still has a solid lead, and there are three tiles in the bag. The Oxo hook remains a serious threat, and Doko has a scary number of possibilities that fit in that spot, including Dog Ear, Dog On, Goon Ear, Good Ear, and Ordini. He can also have Roniod in that same spot. But here's the scary part for a team Roniod can fit underneath Preluder as well a totally different section of the board. Similarly, Doko can have Energid in the same spot, either of which will be an instant win. With many more threats at the bottom of the board than at the top, Etim is forced to block the bottom and pray that Doko hasn't drawn one of his two winning combinations. He plays Rock for 27, and after drawing the last three tiles from the bag, discovers, to his relief, Doko doesn't have one of his winning combinations. The two players finish off the formality of the endgame, and a team holds off the surging Doko with a thrilling 441 to 400 win to clinch the MGI Grand Slam Championship. It was a true pleasure to see Nasikak at team take down this event. I've played him several times in my career and his calm, easygoing demeanor belies his fierce competitiveness. His lofty worldwide ranking is no mistake. But as a Scrabble fan, watching Timilehin Doko's rapid ascent has been thrilling. The sky is the limit for what he can achieve in Scrabble and I can't wait to see where he goes from here. Quick question for those of you still here. Would you like updates when I have live streamed events like this coming up on my calendar? And if so, how would you like to receive them? I'm really open to suggestion on this. So whatever ideas you have, feel free to leave them in the comments. In any event, I had so much fun broadcasting the MGI Grand Slam this year. And I hope you enjoyed this recap video as well. Thanks for watching.